What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and if you've been watching the channel for the last year or two, you might notice that one of my biggest focuses has been on technology that is in the living room and home theater experience. Whether it's in the office space with like different projectors, TVs, as well as audio products and speaker setups, but at the same time, I've also been doing videos of like tech that is in my home with like different sound bars and just like playing with the combination of products that work the best with every workflow. And something that's been very prominent in the past couple of years is not only sound bars, but also stream boxes that are able to give you access to all of your favorite apps and platforms to stream the content that you love. And today we're taking a look at a product that combines both of that, and it is a Verizon Stream TV soundbar in collaboration with Bang & Olufsen. I would like to give a huge thanks to Verizon for sponsoring this video, and all the links to the products are gonna be in the description section below. So essentially what this product is, is that it has Android TV built in. You can go ahead and download apps from the Google Play Store, download movies, and also have all of your favorite streaming platforms such as Disney, uh, Crave, DAZN in my case, and also like Netflix, YouTube. There's countless apps on the Google App Store as well as access to like Verizon streaming services. So if you do have a Verizon account, it allows you to access every single thing, whether it's on Verizon or other streaming platforms all in one place. And of course, not to forget that this is a Bang & Olufsen collaboration speaker. So you also have the incredible sound quality with Dolby Atmos support, and there's actually two different products in the lineup. This right here is the Stream TV Soundbar Pro, and it comes in at a price point of $999. And there is also a Stream TV Soundbar, which is like a budget model that comes in at the price point of $399. So depending on your needs and preferences, these are both gonna be incredible upgrades, just like the standard TV setup, but delivering a great streaming experience as well as incredible sound quality. So the one that we're gonna really focus on is the Stream TV Soundbar Pro. And this right here is actually modeled very similarly to Bang & Olufsen's Soundbar speaker that actually costs over $2,500. But this is kind of like a modified version that has less speaker elements, but still has most of the great sound quality features that the Soundbar has because it did have to make room for the actual streaming box element. And there's a few things that I really like about it. So first off, when it comes to the design, it has like a very minimalist look to it and you can decide to install it on the wall or also just have it on like a table or like a media cabinet and in my case I actually have it set up in my bedroom where I watch like Formula One at five or six in the morning and I think it looks absolutely incredible. You take a look at the side it has like a nice elevation to it with like a metal trim that goes all the way around a very high quality look and there's also like a beautiful fabric finish that goes around the front of it and in general it does sit very flush against the wall with the TV and was very very easy to wall mount. Even sitting on like a table or like a media console, I think it looked very, very seamless. And I think when it comes to like any soundbar as something that you're adding to your overall setup and the reason why they've been so popular, the design is a huge reason for that. With the Bang & Olufsen sound technology, it also has Dolby Atmos support and it connects to your TV via HDMI eARC. And that is probably the best input nowadays when it comes to audio quality. And it also does have a virtual surround experience. And on the technical side of things, it has a total of nine drivers, including four full range speakers, three tweeters, and also two woofers. In terms of like the content that I typically consume in this type of setup, it is not only like watching sports like Formula One and hockey, but also watching TV shows and movies occasionally where you really do get that nice Dolby optimization with the content that supports that. But on top of that, I also like to stream music to it via Wi-Fi on Spotify to a speaker like this. And in general, I found that it was not only able to do a really good job in giving you a nice and amplified sound with great bass considering it is all contained in one soundbar element, but you can actually select all the different modes that it gives you in a list. And you do also have the custom option as well, which allows you to really tune the settings exactly the way that you like depending on your own preferences. Moving to the actual Stream TV element though, you can take a look at the interface and it is really simple. You go ahead and navigate through your Verizon menus where you can sign into your account and consume the content there and there's like a mixture of paid and also free content. But on top of that, I actually have it logged into like Netflix and YouTube and any streaming platform that you might have, including like Disney Plus. There's just countless ones that you can just go ahead and install the app and access just like you would on like any smart TV setup, but in a much better experience delivered through Android TV 
me. And for anyone who is like, maybe has like a TV that's a little bit older and doesn't have smart TV built in, you go ahead and plug this in and it will bring it right up to date while also improving the sound quality significantly. It is literally like the best way to like supercharge your home theater or like bedroom TV setup. And I noticed that right away and I always ensure that I have a sound bar that goes with each TV. Another feature that I do also find incredibly useful is a direct HDMI input. So you go ahead and flip this over here and you take a look at kind of the IO and all the things in the back here. And you have the HDMI output, which is the one that actually goes to your TV. But you also have three HDMI inputs that have the 4K resolution support and everything, as well as an ethernet and USB. The reason why the HDMI is really handy is because for example, in a certain setup I have in my home office, for example, I do have a projector that is in the ceiling and instead of running multiple cables for the inputs to the projector individually, which is like a 50 foot HDMI cable, I actually have this sitting near my desk on a console table and I can connect stuff like my set top box, my PS5, for example, all directly to the soundbar and with just one output, it can go to either the TV or projector. So I absolutely love that feature and that is one that I find missing on a ton of good soundbars out there. What I do also like though is like the remote and controls. You go ahead and look at the front of the soundbar here. You actually do have like a touch capacitive panel for play pause, skip, but one really nice feature is you can actually press like a pager button right here and it will send like a loud beep over to your remote because if you're like myself, I lose my remote all the time. And speaking of the remote, it has all of your different controls for like Google Assistant, for example, being able to tell it what show to play on any app such as YouTube or Netflix and everything, but of course, also your typical controls such as your input for what's connected to it, your volume, your channel, and also your settings and all that. But one thing that I would have liked to have seen is like quick access buttons to like the most used platforms such as Netflix and YouTube. So now we're taking a look at the Stream TV soundbar, which is a $399 offering. If you wanna save a little bit of money compared to like the Pro model, and it still has the great two-in-one experience with the Android TV built in, as well as a huge improvement to the built-in speakers of your TV. And just taking a look at it here, when it comes to the setup itself, one of the differences is the fact that it is meant to go on like a media console or on a table. The Pro model does mount on the wall, which is really nice, but in a setup like this in like a bedroom, for example, you can see that this actually looks really, really good. It has like a nice streamlined design that is made by Verizon and it's still made in partnership with Bang & Olufsen's audio technology. One of the differences when it comes to the sound is the fact that this has a five speaker setup. It has three tweeters and two woofers compared to the nine speaker setup on the Pro model. But when it comes to the sound quality, I still found that it was actually really, really good. It had a decent amount of bass, maybe not as punchy as say like the nine speaker setup and above, but at the same time, the mids and the highs still did kind of balance out pretty nicely. But either way, compared to any speaker that is inside of a TV, this would be a huge upgrade that is definitely worthwhile because it still has the Dolby Atmos audio support and audio tuning, as well as virtual surround sound. So it does give you like more of a dimension in a pretty compact and simplistic looking design. I've got a 50 inch TV right here and you can see just based on the size reference, it gives you a really good amount of power. This bedroom, for example, is probably just about like a hundred square foot and it gives an incredible experience for like watching movies from bed, for example. The automatic sound field technology is still present on this model, so it will detect the content that you're playing and tune it specifically for that, which is great. And the remote is the same one that you find on the Pro. It has all of your controls, Google Assistant built in, and I also like the fact that from a hardware standpoint, it has the buttons over on this side for both Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity, as well as a button to find your remote. So by pressing this right here, it will actually signal a beep on the remote and I just go ahead and press okay once I found it. So you never lose your remote anywhere, which seems to happen all the time for some reason. But just going through like the menus, once again here, you do have the Android TV experience with Verizon streaming services built in as well. But just going to the home screen, you can see there are all my apps, including YouTube, Disney, Netflix, and you can also save like your watch list, but you could also log in to your Verizon account and be able to stream content and also rent your favorite 
favorite movies from there. What I really like about Android TV, which has kind of been the one that I've used the most in the last year or so on like Sony TVs as well, is just the fact that you have access to the Google Play App Store. So in this case, I actually do have a VPN and that allows me to access like the US Netflix, for example, um, and being able to install these apps that may not be always available on every smart TV platform out there definitely gives it an advantage. This does have HDMI inputs directly in the speaker as well, which is really handy, especially in a setup like this, where the TV is well mounted, the cables are all wired through nicely. So if you have like a game console or something else that you would like to connect to it, instead of having to wire another HDMI through to the TV, through the wall, you can just go ahead and plug it straight into the soundbar input and it has the 4K resolution at 60 Hertz and HDMI 2.1 support. Both the soundbar models do have Wi-Fi 6 built in, which I would say is like really essential going into 2022, especially with like the high quality content that is becoming more prominent and definitely requires like a solid enough internet connection at all times and a reliable one to ensure that the content is able to stream smoothly wherever you are. So now that we've taken a look at both soundbars, I'm sure the big question is which one should you buy? Should you get the Pro model at $999 or should you get the cheaper model at about $399? And to be totally honest, I would say that like the Pro model relative to the cost of like the Bang & Olufsen soundbar, which looks pretty much identical, is actually a really, really good value. Not only is it like a fraction of the price and slightly modified, but it still has a lot of the great features, the sound optimization and like the virtual surround setup up as well as the whole Android TV experience all built into one. So I think if you have the money, then you're definitely going to enjoy the experience on the Pro soundbar. On the other hand, the budget offering at $399 still delivers a lot of great features, a multiple speaker setup, and it's able to sit on a table very seamlessly. But I would say the design is definitely not my favorite, but it definitely is a huge improvement to any TV setup or any older TV setup compared to what you already have. The sound quality is still very, very good. And at the price point, I would say that it is a pretty good value overall, but it just, when you're comparing to like the value of the pro model, I believe that the pro model is definitely worth it. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link down below. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I'll see you all in the next one.